what is specific heat capacity? Now, in order to answer that, let's imagine that we're trying to raise the temperature of a substance by one degree Kelvin. So let's illustrate our idea with an example. Let's take our substance to be water, for example. I have a glass of water. Now, if we were to heat this water up uh, by about one degree, so we have to input some energy into the system. Now, what does the amount of energy actually depend on? Now, as you can see in the equation above, one really important factor is the mass of the substance. For example, if I was to have a lot more water, that will require more energy to raise the temperature by one degree Kelvin. It's also worth quickly noting down that in the above equation, delta E stands for the amount of energy that's been input into the substance. M is the mass of the substance and delta theta is the change of temperature in the substance. So just to recap, if you want to raise the temperature of a substance, the more mass it has, the more energy is actually required to raise its temperature. Now, the other fact that is really, really important in this equation is the specific heat capacity of a substance given the letter C. Now, I've rearranged the equation for the specific heat capacity and we can see that the specific heat capacity is really defined as the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of say one kilogram by one degree Kelvin. The SI units for specific heat capacity are therefore joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Remember, um, anytime you're dividing, you can also express this with a fraction raised to the power of minus one. And we can summarize the unit of specific heat capacity as I have done over here as joule per kilogram per Kelvin. Now, hopefully this makes sense, guys. Join us for our next video in which we're going to be looking at past paper questions on specific heat capacity. As always, if there are any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below.